All right, let's get fired up here. Just give it a few minutes, see if we can uh, give everybody a chance to uh, log on here. And uh, real quick guys, just wanted to say welcome back to another Thursday night live seminar. I'm Captain Mike, host of Florida Sport Fishing TV. I'm certainly uh, really appreciative that you're here again. Uh, sorry that we missed last week, but you know, out filming, doing the best that we can to keep this going. A uh, couple quick announcements and then we'll get started. Just as a reminder, you know, all of these weekly seminars, actually all of our footage, you can catch up with it on YouTube right now at youtube.com forward slash Florida Sport Fishing. We've got a really awesome streaming website coming up as well. We're going to talk to you more about that in the coming weeks that you'll really enjoy. A lot of great content there, a lot of really fresh stuff that you haven't seen before. So I'm super excited about that. Our new season of Florida Sport Fishing TV, our 11th consecutive season, starts July 2nd on Valley Sports season premiere. And all of our episodes, I've got to tell you, I'm super stoked about this. They're going to air Friday mornings, Saturday mornings, Sunday night, and Monday. So we've got a killer lineup coming up uh, for the next 12 months all year. We're down here in Marathon, as you know, so doing a lot of new stuff that we've never filmed before. Really excited to share it with you, okay? Uh, so our weekly gigs here, you know, as you guys know, we start off real quick with just a few minute little recap with a real time Florida Keys fishing report, what's going on down here. And then we get right into our topic of conversation, which tonight is trolling lure color and does it really matter? Does it really, really matter? what color that lure is i think you're going to be surprised to learn the answer so you know make sure that you stick around here and one more thing i just want to mention if you're not able to stay tuned for the entire seminar don't worry it's going to be in our feed you can always come back and watch it right in our instagram feed so you're never going to miss out with florida sport fishing tv just remember that so let's get right into it here on the fishing front across the keys the big news dolphin fishing it's on fire i mean it's it's stupid i gotta tell you you want to catch dolphin go out there between 600 and 900 feet and you're going to catch dolphin i mean it's really what it boils down to that's not the problem here of finding and catching the fins they're here especially right now there's a ton of them out there okay the problem is finding big gaffers you know even big schoolies you know, finding those larger fish, that's the biggest challenge right now. But there's plenty of them out there. So what they might not make up for in quality, they're certainly going to make up for in quantity. The trick, look for the birds, look for the weed lines. There's been a lot of scattered weed out there as well. But the birds are going to lead the way to the action. I was out over the weekend, started each day dolphin fishing. I'll tell you what, that 650, 675 foot range, man, it's like National Geographic out there. Birds just everywhere, piles of birds, little tunas flying around, ton of little schoolies. You know, and you gotta weed through them. Some of them are keepers, some of them are not, but there's plenty of action. And I wanna remind you that there's a lot of ways to catch those dolphin, and perhaps nothing is as exciting as throwing a popper. You know, throwing a popper at those fish and watching them come up and fight for it is just super exciting, even on the smaller dolphin. So take it up a notch, go to the artificials, especially with those smaller fish, and you're going to have an absolute ball. While you're offshore, deep dropping is another great option. There's some nice snowy groupers being caught. Remember, it's one per boat. You put one in the boat, you're done. It's one and done. Move on to something else. Uh, big gray tile fish, black belly rose fish, barrel fish mixed in. The deep drop fishing is excellent across the keys. It almost always is. It's very conditions driven. As long as you get a good presentation and you're able to maintain that presentation on that, you know, on the bottom, I'll tell you what, you should do really well. Sword fishing is sword fishing. Every day is a new day and every day is consistent. You can go out there one day, get five bites, go out there the next day and never see a bite. Um, but it's certainly worth doing and you're never gonna catch them sitting on the couch, okay? Closer to shore, I would say the hot thing right now, man, if you want to put some fish in the freezer, if you want to stay busy, go fish the reef. Okay, fish the reef. Not only are we seeing a larger class of yellowtails across the keys here, but a lot of big mangroves. It's that time of the year, mid-June, there's a lot of big mangrove snappers on the reef. 
the Fulos bigger mangroves, bigger baits, okay, bigger baits, live pinfish, pilchards, ballyhoo, you know, skip those little tiny cut chunk baits or strip baits that you're typically gonna fish for the yellowtails, you know, you wanna step it up. You wanna step it up to a little bit of heavier tackle. We talked about that on a recent uh, gig that I posted online here, a recent short little brief seminar on catching the mangroves. Um, but I'm telling you what, there's a lot of action on the reef. There's black groupers mixed in with the snappers as well. So chum, they will come. You're not finding any good conditions with moving water and current, move. You know, give it a little while. If you don't have good conditions, move east or west a few miles until you find that moving water because it's absolutely essential uh, to successful fishing on the reef. Deeper offshore, I tell you what, if you've been watching my Instagram page and, you know, really staying up to speed with our stories, man, you've got to be seeing all of these giant mutton snappers that we're crushing. I'm on these fish and I'm on them good. And let me tell you something, the bite is hot. But it's been an early morning bite. You pick away during the day, but it seems to be really an early morning bite. And when I say early morning, you know, here in the Keys, it's kind of funny. There's a lot of times I'm on my way back to the dock when guys are just leaving. And I'm already you know, on the way home, okay? I mean, really a dawn bite, sunrise city. You guys, you guys who know, you know sunrise city, right? So, but the big, big mutton snappers are out there in deeper water. That fishing is really consistent. Mixed in with the mutton snappers, yellow jacks, a nice healthy showing of big African pompano on the wrecks. These things are bruisers, man. They fight like crazy. They, they're delicious on the dinner table. It's an exotic fish. And I'll tell you what, it's a trophy to catch a 30, 40 pound African pompano. And when you catch one on a slow pitch jig, that changes the game altogether right there. So again, the reef fishing is an excellent option. The wreck fishing is an excellent option. And of course, dolphin fishing is a sure bet. We do have some wind coming over the weekend, but certainly shouldn't keep you off the water. It doesn't look like anything extreme. Uh, you know, talking about dolphin, that kind of leads us right into our topic of conversation. And what I really wanted to talk to you about tonight is trolling lure color, okay? And does it really matter? Does it really matter if I'm out there, you know, and just by the way, for the for display purposes, I'm using a couple different options. Some Islander style lures in a pink and white, green pattern, almost like a dolphin pattern. Blue and white, which of course is a favorite. Okay, well, you know why it's a favorite? Because more people fish it than any other color. So of course, you're gonna see more fish caught on blue and white, um, but it's an excellent color for sure. And a purple and black. So again, just for display purposes, I also have the same color scheme and some smaller little tuna tacos. We use these for schoolie dolphin and especially the blackfin tunas. They love these ballyhood tuna tacos. There's that green pattern. There's the blue. There's the purple right there. And of course, the pink. And by the way, if you're wondering what I have these on, you know, this is a Dubrow lure and line keeper. This isn't a commercial for Dubrow. I just want to point this out to you. It's absolutely awesome. Super simple. Got a bar in the back, couple suction cups. You can mount it permanently with screws or with the suction cups. And right on the front, you've got these lure and line wine kind of leaders here that hold the leader in place. Okay, you just wrap it around it. It's got this little tab that holds the leader in place. The hook point sticks right in that hole right there. And it's so easy to keep all your lures organized. Listen, lure bags are nice. There's no question they work. But this is also a great option. It's easy for me to just pull these off. I can take this entire rack, throw it in a five gallon bucket, or just literally stick it right somewhere inside the boat and have all my different dolphin color lures that I want for that particular day. So really an ingenious little gig there. Check them out at Dubro Fishing. But again, this isn't about that. It's about lure color. And this is just for display purposes that I'm just showing you this here. So I don't have leaders everywhere. So let's get into it. First of all, can fish see color, okay? That's first and foremost, and it's probably the biggest question, can fish see color? Well, the answer is, hell yeah, they could see color. Absolutely, there's no question that fish can see color. It's been scientifically proven, not because they tested a fish and say swim toward blue and not toward pink, but because of the, you know, the makeup of a fish's eye, all of the cones and everything that's inside a fish's eye. There's no question fish can see color, however, 
remember this. What fish are we talking about? Because pelagic game fish that generally swim and hunt and feed in the upper echelon of the water column where that water is crystal clear and there's a lot of light penetrating, well, those fish can see color far greater than a fish that lives on the bottom 500 to 1,000 feet below, right? That fish that's living down there at 800 feet may be a golden tile fish, just as an example. It's less important for that fish to see the difference between pink or blue or purple or orange or whatever. He hunts by feel, by vibration, by contrast. So yes, fish can see color, but it also depends on the habitat that the fish live in. And keep in mind, what we're talking about today is lure color for trolling lures. So obviously we're discussing fish that hunt on or near the surface. And again, in those clear conditions, out in the Gulf Stream, the loop current, I don't care where you're fishing, generally that water is really, really clear. So that means fish can see color, okay? And that color may in fact play a big role in your lure selection, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. So again, remember, pelagics have better ability to discern different colors. However, however, this is perhaps the most important fact. Fish don't think like you and I think. Come on, listen to what you're saying. Listen to what I'm saying. They're, they don't think about it. They don't sit there and go, hmm, wait a minute. Nah, that's just the wrong shade of pink. You know, if that was a little bit darker pink, yeah, I might chase that thing and eat it. But no, nah, that's just a little bit too light or blue or whatever it may be. They don't have that ability. They don't have that brain power the way that you and I do, okay? And that same rule applies to lifelike details on a lure. Even though we're not talking about that, we're talking about color, but let's just touch on that for a minute. A lure that's absolutely finished to perfection, and there's a lot of them out there, that really looks like a bait fish. It mimics a bait fish in size, in, in pattern, in color, and you look at it and you're like, wow, man, that looks just like a sardine or a, or a menhaden or a mackerel or whatever, you know. Can fish see all of those details? Well, they can, but again, they're not stopping and thinking and going, well, look at that. Look at those little stripes on that bait fish's back. That has to be a mackerel. Or look at that perfectly painted, you know, wing on that flying fish imitation. It looks just like a flying fish. It doesn't happen that way, okay? These fish hunt by instinct. They hunt, you know, they're, they're characteristically, they're predators, right? And if it's escaping, they generally chase it. So, you know, let's just not forget that lures are sometimes designed to catch fishermen just as much, if not more, than to catch fish themselves, all right? So just don't lose sight of that. Nevertheless, fish's eye, we know can discern color up toward the surface, clearer water. But what does he really see? Is he really seeing the difference between, you know, pink and white and blue and white? Does he really, you know, you and I, we can look at that and go pink and white and blue and white, but of course a fish can't decide that. And apples for apples, if that lure, maybe this is over top of a ballyhoo, just as an example, obviously a common application for an island style lure, okay? And if apples for apples, if this is in a particular position in the trolling spread, or if this is in a particular position in the trolling spread and everything is identical and you go by that same fish, that fish is not going to determine if he's going to eat and commit, if he's going to attack and commit and exert the energy required to catch that bait and engulf it simply based on color. It's not gonna happen. He first feels the bait, he sees the bait, and fish can see from a great distance. Remember that game fish, especially. Large eyes, okay, large eyes, a lot of cones in their eyes, and that means that they could see from a great distance. And you and I, you know, when we, when we squint, right, we change the shape of our eye in order to focus. Closer, long distance, a fish doesn't do that. He doesn't change the shape of his eye this way, he moves his lens this way closer and further. And when that lens is set further back in the fish's head, he can see further. As he swims up and approaches a bait, those lenses move closer and he now zeroes in on that bait and he can pick off more of those details and he can see closer up. 
that's how it works with a fish. So when he decides to commit, in my personal preference, and certainly there are, everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? And you're gonna have a lot of captains out there who might go, man, that guy Mike doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. And you're gonna have other captains out there who go, man, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard that guy Mike say. So again, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. I'm telling you my philosophy and how I feel about it and everything that I've learned about it. And certainly if something's working for you, stick with it, good luck, go get them, okay? Um, nevertheless, the fish is making a decision to commit to eat that bait long before it determines what color it is. How is it moving? Where is it in the trolling pattern? How fast is it swimming? You know, what's far more important is potentially size. If that fish is zeroed in on smaller bait fish or maybe small squid, he very likely is gonna be more adapter, more committed, ready to commit on a smaller three or four inch bait than on a six or seven or eight inch bait, right? It just mimics the prey in size and in appearance much greater than the larger bait. So first and foremost, size matters. Size matters far more than color matters. That's, you know, again, first and foremost. And there have been studies that prove this, you know, that really have. I would certainly rather have the wrong color lure or an off color lure, but the right size, shape, and appearance than a perfectly colored lure that's the wrong size, you know? So you gotta kind of weigh out what's important to you. I know what's important to me. But again, they're seeing that bait, it's swimming properly, depending on where it is in the trolling spread, they commit because they have to eat. They're reacting to what is happening. They're predators, okay? And truthfully, if they really are making a decision based on color, how many bait fish have you seen that look like that? Tell me, how many? How many bait fish have you seen that, you know, sure, I can understand this is blue and white, kind of looks like a ballyhoo or a flying fish, certainly, right? which is why most anglers, if you were to ask most anglers, they're gonna fish this before they fish this. Not because this catches more fish, but because it catches more fishermen, because it just looks more like a real natural pattern. But again, fish are not making that distinguishing, you know, evaluation the way that you and I are. They're evaluating so many other factors and they're not thinking about it the way that you and I think about it. Because at the end of the day, it's their lateral line, okay, that really is probably the most important aspect to them feeding. It's their lateral line. It's feeling what's happening around them. It's seeing prey escaping or moving at a high rate of speed in a trolling pattern, you know, in a spread where it looks like escaping or wounded prey. We know what the whole scenario, you know, mimics with the white water looking like a feeding frenzy, the bottom of the boat potentially appearing like a bait ball and your lures that are set way back are the ones that are weak and wounded. So the fish commits because that's the easiest lure, that's the easiest bait fish. He doesn't realize it's a lure, obviously. That's the easiest bait fish <coughs> to catch. So he commits on that. He doesn't do it because of the color of the lure. Now understand, I do believe that color plays a role. For example, bright sunny days, clear water, my opinion is to fish bright lures, okay? Dark days, I like to fish dark lures. Now you may think that that's counterintuitive. You know, you may say, well, wait a minute, if it's a really dark day, don't you want a bright colored lure that fish could see? Well, fish could see this, okay? They can spot it, they could see it swimming through the water, they could see that smoke trail, they could feel it in the water. And on a bright sunny day, baits are very reflective. They're very bright because most of the bait fish out there, right, are silvery in pattern. So when you have a nice bright day, those baits are lit up. They're very iridescent, ultraviolet, which by the way, Game fish absolutely can see ultraviolet light, okay? Only in the top echelons of the water column. Once you get too deep, you lose, the fish lose the ability to see that ultraviolet light. But closer to the surface, they certainly can, okay? Keep that in mind. 
So nevertheless, on a bright sunny day, your trolling lures, in my opinion, should be bright, okay, and to appear in a natural scenario. On a dark, dismal day, it's cloudy, it's overcast, today, yesterday, the day before, okay, it's raining like crazy, it's dark. If you're gonna be out there trolling for dolphin, in my opinion, you better have some dark lures in your trolling spread, because again, it really mimics the scenario of what's happening out there, and it's also a lot of contrast, because remember that fish feed you know, not based only on color, I should say they find their prey, not only based, like we said earlier, on, on the value of color, but contrast is more important than color. They see it against a different background. Okay? They see it against a different background. So, you know, that's something to consider as well. You know, I'll tell you, at the end of the day, I don't know if there really is a way for anyone to actually determine if color really makes a difference to the fish themselves, okay? Like I said, I personally believe that there's many other factors that come into play that are far more important than the color of a trolling lure. It's the speed, it's the pattern, the, the trolling spread of the overall look and feel of the lures. Certainly certain lures are better than others. I, for example, dolphin fishing, I like chuggers that put out a lot of smoke. I don't give a shit what color they are, okay? Puts out a lot of smoke and turbulence and the dolphins zero in on that. I'd rather have that right style lure. For the tunas, I prefer something with a bullet shaped head, little, you know, metal shaped head that just races through the water really fast because those tunas typically feed on the smaller bait fish, the fast moving bait fish. So it's factors like that that are far greater of importance to me then color, making sure that the, the right lure is fished on the right rod. You know, I don't want to take a tiny little lure like this and fish it on a stiff 50 pound class trolling outfit. The lure is not going to have any light. The rod's not going to move at all. It's not going to pulse. It's not going to breathe. It's just going to drag this through the water like a piece of metal and plastic that it really is. On the other hand, you put it on a 20 pound trolling outfit with a softer tip, okay, and this lure is going to come to life. So remember that there's a lot of other factors to consider versus just lure color. Now, once you get all of that other stuff dialed in, okay, and you figure it out, okay, I got it. I'm doing this right. I'm trolling properly. I've got the right spread, the right tackle. At that point, if you want to fine tune it even a little bit greater, that's when color comes into play. It doesn't come into play in the beginning. It's one of I don't want to say the least important, but there are far more important factors that you have to master first before you sit there and go, I'm going to spend 15, 20, 30, 50 bucks, whatever on this lure because of the color of the lure. Okay. A lot of other factors that you have to consider. And like I said, remember, you know, there's, they hunt and they feed by seeing it in a distance, moving by a bait escaping, by feeling it in the water, by their natural instincts, you know, and as they approach that bait, as they're coming in at full speed to attack the bait, at this point, as they're closing that gap at a high rate of speed, it's certainly possible that close up, now color plays a little bit of a bigger role. But is the fish gonna charge in from a great distance? He sees that bait, he's gonna charge in, and he swims right up to it at the last minute, he looks at it and goes, nope, boop and swims on. You know, I believe that happens. It certainly does. We've all seen, you know, a fish come in hot and turn off, but did he turn off because it was the wrong color or did he turn off because it was another reason? You know, maybe it didn't look right, not because of color, but it wasn't swimming right or so many other factors that come into play. You know, I've got a lot of different lure colors. I do lean on shades, you know, to me, just as an example, you know, this and this are very kind of similar colors. They're somewhat bright. Yeah, I know this is bluish and this is pinkish, but they're bright. They really stand out. On the other hand, you know, these are darker colors, right? They're nowhere near as bright. The purple and black, a dark green. So I've got darker shades. I've got lighter shades. And I sometimes I mix it up. Sometimes I'll do experiments and say, you know what? I'm gonna start on the port side and do all lighter shades. And on the starboard side, I'm gonna do darker shades and see if there's a difference. But you know, is the trip 
Hold on one second, we've got a poor connection. There we go, sorry about that. And on, you know, as the trip progresses, I realize I, I stop even thinking about that altogether, about what color is where, okay? And I've had other trips where, I don't care, I mix it up, especially when I'm fishing for the blackfin tunas, when I'm trolling the blackfin tunas, I'll take an entire spread of eight or 10 rods and I'll fish all of these colors right here. I'll mix them all up and I'll tell you what, I'll catch fish on all of them. And sometimes I will find that a certain color, oh man, we just caught three in a row on orange and black. Three in a row. Was that coincidence or was that because no other color they liked? And then you catch another fish on blue and white or pink and white or whatever. So again, you know, it's a fun thing to talk about. It's a fun thing to think about. It's something that's been, you know, a debate that's been going on forever. And I think it will go on forever. But at the end of the day, if you were to ask me, I'm gonna tell you and I'm gonna reiterate, get everything else dialed in first. Make sure you're fishing the right lures, match the hatch in size, location, speed, things to that nature, long before you worry about color, okay? And after you get everything else dialed in, then go ahead and say, hey, I'm gonna get a couple of these, a couple of that, and try and experiment and try and come up with some pattern and solve this mystery that fishermen all over the world have yet to solve. And just remember that too, because if it was such a sure thing, if everybody knew that for sure, this was the hot color right here, right here, there wouldn't be any other color lures. This is it right here. You don't need to pull anything else. They don't need to sell anything else. All you gotta do is just make pink and white because they've proven that that's it right there. Nobody's done that. That's why you go to a, you know, a, a tackle shop. It's like a candy store with all the different colors, everything under the rainbow and then some. Okay, a lot of it's designed to catch you. So don't forget about that, okay? That being said, get out there, spend time on the water. Nothing, you know, is better than, you know, than actually being out there and trying these different things. And it's a lot of fun. And the worst thing that can happen is you're gonna catch a bunch of fish. So, hey, I really appreciate you tuning in here. Again, if you weren't able to catch the whole thing and you tuned in at the end there, or if you wanna see some of our previous seminars, make sure you check us out on YouTube. Don't forget, season 11 Florida Sport Fishing TV debuts, premieres on Bally Sports, which is channel 402 across most of Florida in HD, okay, July 2nd, Friday, July 2nd. That's gonna be a great weekend. Um, and until then, get out there, go fishing, hit the reef, go dolphin fishing, go mutton fishing. It's all on fire right now. I'll see you next week. GoPro, stop recording.